Okay, now we're ready for part C here. And part C says if f of x equals negative 2, then what is x? So in this case, they've given us a y value of negative 2, and we're to find the x that goes with it. So again, using our notation, our, our equation rather, then we know that instead of f of x, or instead of y, we're going to be using negative 2 equals negative 3x squared plus 5x. And now we can solve this for x. So in order to do that, um, since this is quadratic, or it has a square as our highest power of x, let's move everything over to the left so that our um, all of our terms are on the same side. So when we do that, I'm going to put them in the correct order also. That would be 3, oh that looks pitiful, 3x squared, and then minus 5x, and then minus 2 equals 0. Now, because this is set equal to 0 and it's quadratic, we're going to have to um, factor in order to be able to solve. So if we factor this, 3x squared will break down into 3x times x, and 2, the only factors of 2 are 2 and 1. So, um, let's see, let's put 2 here and 1 here. In order to get a negative 5, those signs have to be opposite, so we'd have to have a negative uh, 6x and a positive 1x in order to make a negative 5x. Now once it's fully factored, then we can set each one of the factors equal to 0 and finish solving for x. So if I move 1 to the other side, we have 3x equals negative 1 or x equals negative 1 third. And then if we move this 2 over, we would have x equals 2. So our question said, what is x? Well, x is negative 1 third, and x is 2. Now also, if you'll remember, it said, um, back up to our, to our question, um, what points possible are on the graph of f? Well, remember, we had two points here. Our first one we found x to be negative one-third when we used a y value of negative two. And for the second one, we found an x value of two when we used a y value of negative two. So those would be our two points on the graph. All right, part E. Part E says list the x-intercept, if any, of the graph. All right, so for x-intercepts, we need to determine what do we know. And we know that for every single x-intercept, the y value is 0. So let's use that. Back in my original equation, I'll move it up a little bit so we can see that. That would be 0 equals negative 3x squared plus 5x. And then we'll continue to solve that for the x-intercept. So if I um, remove an x here, we can factor an x out of there. That would be x times negative 3x plus 5 and then setting each one of the factors equal to 0. Um, we would have x equals 0 and negative 3x plus 5 equals 0. Finishing solving this, we get negative 3x equals negative 5 or x equals 5 thirds. Now, that tells us we have two different x-intercepts. Our first one is at 0, 0 and our second one is at 5 thirds comma 0, so those two places. Okay, part F, our last one here. Part F says that we're supposed to find the y-intercept. And again, what do we know about every single y-intercept? Well, the x value has to be 0. So I know it may be hard to uh, remember back to what our equation was, but our equation was y equals negative 3x squared, so I'm going to put in a 0 in place of x, plus 5 times instead of x, we're going to put 0. So when we solve that, y will equal 0. So our y-intercept is the point 0, 0 also.